Hello, I'm Francois from Shakmat. Uh, in this video, we will show some tricks of the Forbix Rook, demonstrate the basic functionalities, and answer some of your questions you asked on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Muffwiggler. So let's start by showing all the features of the model, and let's start with the mode. So the mode is a way you're using those pads to create and record rhythm. So the first mode is called the play mode. It simply allows to directly uh, trigger manually uh, drums modules. And this mode also allows to record what you want to do with your uh, triggers. So for example, I got a 16 steps loop here. Clock is given by the clock upon. So you can very easily record and uh, have a pattern running. You have also two functionalities here, which is the length and the shift, which allows to set the pattern length and also to navigate to the original pattern. So if I had, a, for example, 16 step pattern, I'd start and reduce it to the, a four step length pattern. You choose which four step long segment of this pattern you want to play. The quantize option allows to quantize per channel the pattern on the incoming clock. The trigger should be quantized on that. So let's quantize everything. Erase function allows simply to erase the content of the buffer. I think that's uh, all for the play mode. So simply play with the pad and record what you're doing. The second mode is called the pattern mode and allows to recall memory patterns which are inside the model. So those patterns can be factory patterns or also the pattern you made and you want to recall at any time during your life. So in um, pattern mode, you simply choose which track follows the pattern or not. So the pattern is given by two things, the table, potentiometer and CV input, but it's also given by the slot you want to read, and I will come back to this after. So simply for a pattern, let's say you want to read this pattern. You like what's going inside, but you want to do some modification of this pattern, simply press record, and you see the three LEDs, activity LEDs just blinked here. So now you got this. You can simply go back to the play mode and and re record and mess with your buffer. Still, you can play with the length and the shift. As you understood, there are like eight tables accessible by the potentiometer and the CV input, but you can also load which slot of tables you want to load, you want to play. So you can simply press the shortcut function plus load pattern and you see on the screen here you have a zero and a load pattern led is now on and you choose the slot you want to play. Let's go for example with a Richard Divine slot and we have, let's play them and quantize. So you can import what you want and at any time go back and replay So let's go back now to a basic beat. Let's add some kicks. Let's speed up a bit the tempo. 
Okay, let's now go to the fill mode. Fill mode is the same as pattern mode. It allows to read um, inside of module patterns, but the fill mode is a bit more dynamic. It's a bit dynamic because the tables are read only when you press the buttons. So, for example, You can see you can record what you're doing with a fill mode. So I can go, for example, to this table. And let's go back to Cantize. Yeah, it's a bit better. And so you get the point. It allows to make breaks, but it also allows to take several tables at once and to mangle with those to recreate a new beat. We also have this last option, which is the mute mode. Mute mode simply mute channels. And you can also record your mutes by locally erasing some part of your buffer. So actually you have two buffers, the A and B buffers. So on A buffer, as you can, everything I did until now was on the A buffer. What you're doing here is automatically copied on B. And on the B buffer, you can make some modifications. So first question we've been asking how to use the shift function. So this feature allows several applications. Let's say the first one uh, could be, what if we want a smaller, like a um, smaller in terms of steps, uh, patterns than 32 or 16. In this case, it allows to have actually several patterns stored inside the table, but also to navigate through those patterns with the shift functions. Because again, shift, select which segment you want to play and does not shift the sequence step by step. So you will always be on time using the, the shift function. So I recorded a kind of 4-4 four, four on the beat loop. There we go, on 32 steps, with a lot of variations actually. So let's now just go on an eight step long pattern. I know you can choose which part you want to use, which allows to very easily make some breaks. In addition, for example, to the fill mode, you can very easily create some variations. It allows also some application like breaking. And to choose which segment you want to play. So I know on one step pattern, shift is obviously on a no trigger step. And there we go. So, another application we should show with a shift function is the idea of slicing your patterns like you could do in a sampler, for example, by creating slices and allowing to choose which slice you want to play. Exact same you, you're doing here by reducing the length and using the shift function. So everything is controllable by the shift input, so you can also use length and shift with, for example, random generators, or this kind of thing to do the principle of what I'm gonna show. So the idea is to go to a higher tempo, like 180, 170, and to make some drum and bass jungle loops. So there is inside the module, uh, the original uh, partition score of the um, Amen break. 
which is on the 8 slot uh, last pattern. So now we're reading it only on 8 steps. It's like having your arm and break but with any sound you want. And this way you can start to mangle the thing and create some breaky, jungleish stuff. We've been asked to show you how the safe patterns process works and how to make new tables that you can use as a, in pattern mode or in fill mode. So, let's start with a simple kick reference. So we have the tempo and we can like create simply a new table from scratch. Let's say I want to save this precise pattern to, for example, slot number zero, table number one in the memory. So the process you have to make is to press save table. Now you have the slot. You have to choose the slot with a small dot. You have to lighten because you have to pass by the previous selected value. Let's say we go to table number one. You can choose the track you want to save and say we want to save the four tracks there we go so now if i want to load a pattern for example slot zero table number one so let's erase everything here when i reload the slot there we go you have a slot inside so let's now for example take a beat another beat Start with that. Let's say this is your main beat, and now you want to make breaks in your track. Exact same pattern can also be loaded with load fill function. So we are on slot zero, it's good. First table and in fill mode. So as you can see, you can select which part of the stored pattern you want to restore to so select which channel and also select in time which part of the pattern you want to take back into your buffer. We've also been asked to show how the randomizer function is working. So the randomizer allows to automatically fill the patterns, meaning with a certain probability per track, the module will go and read the tables pointed by the fill. So let's say we have a beat at first. And let's load fill slot number nine. Fill slot number nine is composed in the factory slots of different uh, part of Euclidean's patterns, so we can listen to them. Bye. 
basic pattern running in your buffer. So to go into the randomizer menu, press function and randomize, and you have the random amount which is displayed here on the seven segments display. So let's choose a track you want to fill, for example, the snare. It will have like a medium because it's from zero to nine probability if I'm on five to go and read the table number eight on the slot nine because this is what's pointed by the fill. I cannot check all the tracks and they will go all together with a certain probability to read the associated patterns. So this probability is a bit special because it actually goes up while we reach the end of the sequence. So it will do more like a real drummer, breaking at the end of the pattern, not at the beginning. So you can choose per track. Also the probability. Let's say I want a different probability. Here, medium probability. The main probability is pretty high and I want a very low probability on the kick drum. remove when I want this assignation. If I'm going higher in the probability, so let's say to A, B, C, D, the model will also randomize the table number. And now with E, it has a high probability to read any of those patterns stored in the slot number 9. If I'm going to F, it's like pure random probability and you can say per track I want this probability and for this one low probability to read this precise pattern number 7 and this one will have a low probability to randomize to any table. up a bit the rim shot. Another question was to demonstrate a bead we released uh, on our Instagram page like three months ago. Um, this bead was mainly composed by using randomization and some peculiar tables uh, in the factory slots of the four brick screw. So those tables, which are number A, B, C, D, E, F, are utilitarian tables. Those tables uh, for A, B, C, for example, are clock division and clock multiplication, which allows to make some ratchet style beats, like uh, really fast rolls, like you could do to make trap music. Uh, we've released a video on our YouTube channel uh, two years ago, showing how to make those uh, drill with i hat and snares, for example. So in the video on Instagram we're talking about right now, there was a mix of randomization and those tables. So the table, we can hear them. You have to remove the quantize option to be able to listen to them. And as you can see, the first channel is not quantized, meaning it won't follow this. But for our composition, we'll keep it quantized. So, on the A buffer, I got this beat running. So, starting here. And let's not try to add some randomness to this beat. So, let's say we are on E, so you can randomize on every slot. Too much random. Let's say we want this one to just randomize with the 
high probability on table number seven. We want the main probability to be like We can also randomize the kick with a very low probability. Oh, I'm not yet. Yes, and this one can go also along with the IAT. So, those two one set on eight have like a very high probability to go to this field. With a bit of sound design, a bit of patience to just set everything carefully, to have the right beat with the right kick supporting everything, you can reach some more interesting results as we have in the video that provoked the question we are answering right now. Another question was about the clock mangling possibilities of the four bricks. So as we said earlier, we have some uh, utilitarian factory tables like uh, clock multiplication, clock division or some swings also. So those tables are on in the slots A, B, C, D, E, F. So let's go for example with the slot A like we described it earlier. It's a combination between binary multiplication and division of the clock. So let's confirm a choice and let's listen to what's happening. So you could imagine to have a beat running on the three third channel and a clock division multiplication CV control running on the fourth channel. So slot number C, for example, is also a ternary. Multiplication and divisions. And number B is a combination between the two or the slot. more focused on divisions. We can also go and check the slot E, for example, which is made f to give some swings to the beat. So on number one, table number one, we don't have any effect. And the higher the table, the stronger the swing. Same as the multiplication and division, you could have a beat running on the three first channel and the four channel used as a voltage control swing generator. We also wanted to show you some tricks and functionalities that might not be obvious for all of you. Uh, so the first thing you have to know about the four bricks is you can store the current state. So by current state we're saying what's inside the buffer, which pointed slot for the fill, which pointed slot for the pattern mode, uh, plus the quantization of each channel, plus the randomness. So let's set everything you want, for example, this way, like a beat in here. So all this content can be stored, let's say we are also on buffer B, use while maintaining the record button. As you can see the module just flashed, meaning it just wrote in the non-volatile memory all the current state, meaning the next time you will light up your modular system, the module will be in the exact same state. So thank you for watching, that's it for today. If you have another question, just 
ask, comment or YouTube video. And we'll do another video very soon. Bye bye.